there are times where we are, we are called to seasons where we, we, have to, we have to work hard. And there's a lot that needs to be done. And there are a lot of needs that, that, that keep coming. And, and if you were a part of 2020 or 2021, that's kind of how I would describe both those years in the life of the church. And about the time of Pastor Hardwick's funeral back in March, I started to, to really be aware of just a, a need that I had and, and a call that I felt like God was, was issuing to me that said, you, 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 need, you need to breathe. You need to breathe. You need to breathe. And so I began to pray and I began to seek counsel and I began to, to, to seek the Lord on this and say, what does that mean? And, and, and as things came to fit in the right way, in the right timing, it, it seemed to make sense that, that I needed a little bit of an extended time to just, just come away and, and, and rest in the Lord. And so um, I, I want to share with you as, as my church family that that uh, starting tomorrow, August 1st through September 5th, I, I'm going to be on sabbatical. Uh, it's a time of, of rest and recovery. It's a time of meditation in the Lord, in prayer and in the word. It's a time of, of just resting in his presence. Um, the last two years were nothing you can ever be trained for in ministry. And, and I thank you for who you are as Christ Church because all the things we had to contend with, all the uncertainties of COVID-19, where no matter what you did, somebody thought you were very wrong and hated you for it, with all the things that we have dealt with, with political and, and racial issues, where we were like, how do we rise above those things as the people of God and love each other and, and, and speak the truth in love, and yet also have all kinds of room for grace and patience and, and for one another and with one another. All the things that we've been facing as we've tried to say, how do we help more and more people who are more and more in need economically in this season? All of these things. And, and at some point, if you're not careful, and this happens to pastors too, you can begin to think too much, that too much of it depends on, 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 on you. And so I will always be honest with you. I'll always be transparent. I will always, always tell you the truth. And the truth is that I've had to repent in the last month and say, God, forgive me for, for taking too much to, on myself to think that there's too much that I have to do or I can do. And, and I, I knew that I needed to step away. I needed to step away from my own health. I needed to step away just for a few weeks from my own family and just a chance to, to catch my breath and, and, and make sure that not only recovery from what the last two years have been, but I am so, so excited about where God is leading us and how God is moving, how the Spirit is moving in the life of his church. And I want to be ready for that as that continues. And so I thank the board for approving and endorsing this, this time away. I thank our staff, our tremendous staff who work so hard, and, and our pastoral team. I know they are going to continue to lead and, and, and care so well in, in my temporary absence. I, I want to thank our congregational leaders. I mean, every day someone's telling me about how, how, how one of you as our church family is, 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 is loving and is serving and is doing exactly what Debbie was talking about. You're seeing somebody who needs an encouraging word, somebody who needs a meal, somebody who needs their lawn mowed because they just had surgery and, and the grass keeps growing and, and you are just, you're doing it and you're loving and you're serving and you're laying down your life for others the way Jesus has called us to. And so I'm, I'm, confident and I'm thankful and we knew the timing of, of stepping away in August seemed to be right as God orchestrated it and so I, I ask you for your prayers um, I'm, I'm healthy physically I'm healthy mentally I just need a chance to as I, like I said to catch my breath Pastor Dan used to quote an African adage that tribal warriors used to quote after they had journeyed a long distance and they would stop finally and they would say I have to let my soul will catch up to my body. And that's, that's what this time is. God is good, God is faithful, and God has nurtured and sustained me as I know he has you in these years. But Sabbath isn't just about trying to take a rest. It is about remembering that it depends on him. 
He is our source. He is our strength. He is the lifter of our heads. And, and as one of your pastors, I just need a little bit of time to just rest in the arms of my father for a while. And so I ask you to pray for me. I'll be praying fervently for you, continuing to do so. So I just wanted to share that and tell you I love you and I'm thankful and I'm honored and privileged to be a pastor with Christ Church. And I want to do it well. And I want to do it for as long as God lets me. And that's why this time is so important. So I thank you and I'm grateful. So I want to invite our kids. Come on up here, all of our kids, all the way up to uh, sixth grade. If you want to come up and join me, please. We're going to have a seat right here on the steps, and we're going to do this sermon together. It's going to be awesome. These are my favorites, for sure. So come on up. You guys grab a seat right up in here. Sit anywhere you like. I'm going to grab my stool. Come up here, guys. Let's sit right in the middle. Come on up. Come on up. Sit anywhere you want, right on the steps. Come on up. We'll give you plenty of time. we got up in the balcony and all over the place. It's going to be great. Okay. Okay. All right, come on up, guys. Everybody's coming from, still got some more coming down. Come on. How's everybody doing? Good. How's your summer going? Good. Pretty good? Yeah. It's been, been a good summer so far? What, do, what have you been doing? You've been swimming? Yeah. Anybody, raise your hand if you've been swimming. Okay, good deal. Raise your hand if you have been riding your bicycle. Nice. Raise your hand if you have crashed your bicycle. Nice. Perfect. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Okay. Well, th thank you guys so much for coming up here to help. We're going to talk today about what it means to be children and what it means to be parents and what it means to be uh, parents who get older and then our kids become our parents. We're going to talk about all that because that's what God has for us in our reading from Ephesians today. Okay. So anybody who wants to come on up, keep coming, keep coming. We've got plenty of time. All right. Okay. So guys, can I read real quickly from Ephesians chapter 6? We've been walking through Ephesians chapter by chapter, and, and, and next week, uh, Pastor Greg's going to backtrack. We're going to talk about marriage from Ephesians 5, but today, with, with our dedicating uh, those two beautiful babies, Noel and Colin, and having you guys helping us out, we wanted to make sure that we were going to talk about children and parents today. So can we hear just a few verses of scripture here, and then we'll talk about it? What do you think? Sound good? Okay, I'm so glad you guys are here. You guys are the best. This is going to be so, so good. Okay, so Ephesians 1, I'm sorry, Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Let's pray, guys. Father, we are thankful and we are grateful for your faithfulness, for your goodness. And we ask you now to open our hearts and minds that we could hear what you are speaking, that we could uh, receive uh, what you administer to us through uh, our, our littlest brothers and sisters here with me on the platform, Lord, and that we would hear what you would speak to the body through the body, Lord. Let us know what it means to be obedient. Let us know what it means to honor and how you have called us as your family, as the family of God, to grow in these things. We are grateful and we trust you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys. All right. Got some good questions for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Okay. I am thinking of something, something that every single person in this room, something that every single person who's with us online, something that we all have in common, something we've all experienced in our lives, kind of early in our lives, something we've all been. Can anybody think about what I'm maybe thinking about? What do you think? What do you think? Birth. Say that again. Birth. Birth. We, yes, we have all experienced birth. None of you were hatched out of an egg, right? <laughs> Just checking. Just checking. Okay. Okay. Birth. That's exactly right. And, and what, about, what about what comes after, after birth? What else? What else? What do you think? Well, probably, um, I don't know. Okay. That's all right, Ryan. That's all right. You're, you're getting us on the right track. What do you think, Knox? The little kid years. The little kid years. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise known as childhood. Very good. Yes. 
all of us, it may be hard to believe with some of us that are a little bit older, we're not quite the little kids we used to be, but all of us know what it's like to be a kid, right? We might've had different experiences. We might've been kids in different places, different time periods, all of that. But every single one of us, if we think back, some of us have to think back further than others, we remember and know what it was like to be a kid. So I know what I wanna know, and I bet a lot of our, our friends wanna know too. What is it like, what is it like to be a kid today? What do you think? How would you describe what it means to be a kid today? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Anna. Okay, what else? What do you think, Ryan? Freedom? Freedom. Wow. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some, there's some freedom to being a kid. Sure. I'm going to come down here so I can see you guys better. What else? What is, what, is it, what is it like to be a kid today? What do you guys think? What do you think, Bo? Play outside. Play outside. Oh, that's an important part of being a kid, isn't it? That's an awesome part. You bet. What else? What else? We're here. What's it like being a kid today? Um, I think... <laughs> friends. Being with friends? Oh, that's a great part about being a kid, isn't it? Spending lots of time with friends? Of course. Yes, sir. What do you think? It's energizing. Energizing. Oh, kids have so much energy. That's such a great thing, isn't it? And, it, and you, it's like your energy builds more energy. So good. What do you think, Z? Doing your chores. Doing your chores? <laughs> <laughs> Whose kid are you? And where do you live? Because that's not how it works at my house. Wow. How about, you, how about you, Aiden? What do you think? Be, be running around. Be running around. Oh, that's a great part of being a kid. That's a great part. Okay, okay. A couple more. What do you think? Playing with toys. Playing with toys. That's a great part of being a kid. What else do you think? What do you think? One more? One more? Go over here. Next, we got one more. Kids love candy. Kids love, oh, they love candy. That's right, which reminds me. After service today, come see me. I got something for each of you, okay? All right? Okay, thanks for reminding me of that, Knox. Very good, very good. Okay, so one more question, one more question. Which is better, being a kid or being a grown-up? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Huh? Yes, sir. A kid. Being a kid? Why do you, why do you think so? Because you can, it's fun. It's fun. I like that, I like that. Little Zeke, what do you think, man? Being a kid or being a grown-up, which is better? Being a kid. Being a kid? How come? I don't know. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. Okay, you just, you just feel it, right? You just know it. Okay, I like that. Being a kid or being a grown-up, which is better? Um, being a kid because at school you get breaks, and like when you're grown up at a job, you really just have off time, not Man. really long breaks. That sounds pretty miserable. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You got no off time, no breaks. That's, that's, that's true. That's good. All right. What do you think, Ryan? Being a kid or being a grown-up, which is better? Well, both. Bo oh, interesting. Why do you say that? That's a good answer. Well, because for once, we get to play with toys, and when we're being a grown-up, we get to have work. Nice. Y'all agree? <laughs> toys, work. That's good. That's a good answer, Ryan. Good job. Good job. That's both to me. Both to you. I so hear you, bud. I usually do both. You usually do both? Good. You're, you're going to make a good grown-up. You're a good kid. You're going to be a good grown-up. You bet. All right. That's good. That's good. <laughs> All right, Bo, what do you think? Kid or grown up? What's kid. better? Kid. Kid? Why so? Because your life is going to be easier. Easier? And, 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 if, and then your teeth, and if you're very young, your life will be that easy. But if you're a grown up, you'll be. Your life will get harder. Gets harder? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good answers, guys. Good answers. We'll, hang, hang on. We're going we're gonna to come back. We'll have some more questions as we go, okay? But you guys are doing great. So, so very good questions. So remember what, what we read here in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, right? So, so when it comes to whether we're kids or grown-ups, especially parents, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, the good news is God wants to help us out. God wants us to know that, that it's good to be a kid and it's good to be a parent. It's good to be a grown-up. God has special things that he wants to make sure we not only know, but that we get to experience as both. Sound good? So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. So remember how the, our, our Bible verses began today, this passage from Ephesians 6. Paul says, children, do you remember what he says? He says, oh, remember what the next word was? Starts with an O. What are you supposed to do with your parents? 
Remember Jack? What is it, Jack? Obey. Obey. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So what we want to make sure we understand is that, is that here, this is being written to, to, to families who are in the Lord. They're, we might say they're Christian families. They are families that are wanting to follow Jesus together. So to be in the Lord means that we want Jesus to be the one who tells us who we are, what our lives are supposed to be about, and how we're supposed to live those lives together, right? So that's who this is written to, families who are raising their children in the Lord. And so that way, if, if you're a child and, you're, and your parent tells you to do something that's disobedient to God, that might not be something you obey. But that's not who Paul's talking to here. He wants us to know, he's talking about what does it mean to obey your parents in the Lord. So what does it mean to obey? When we use the word obey, what does that mean? I'm gonna come back down here so I can get to you guys easier. What do you think? What does it mean to obey, Aiden? Be nice to your parents. Be nice to your parents, that helps. That's a good part of it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. What else? What do you think, Zeke? Listening to your parents. Oh, listening to your parents. Listening is a big part of obedience, isn't it? It really is. To listen carefully so that we can hear what they say, right? And listening is how it starts, making sure we're, we're paying attention. And then what? What do you think? Let's go over here, catch somebody else. What do you think, sir? Do what they're, um, do what they're told. Oh, that's the second part, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Very good. So we got to, you guys all hear that? So we got to listen, pay attention. And then the second part is we follow direction, right? We, we do what, what that person who is in authority, our parent in this case, tells us we should do. What do you think, Ryan? Well, doing it right away. Oh, that's another important part of obedience. Very good. So we need to listen, right? These guys are, are preaching, man. We got to listen. Then we have to follow the directions and walk that out. And it's better if we do it. Say that again, Ryan. When? Right away. Right away. Very good. That's right. I obey right away. You, say that again. I obey right away. We need to put that on a t-shirt, man. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Very good. That's awesome. All right. So, so we know what it means to obey. So the next question is, why, why should we obey our parents? If our parents are, are, are teaching us in the Lord and leading us in the Lord, why should we obey? Yes, sir. What do you think? Because God says it's the right thing to do. God says it's the right thing to do. That's very important. That's very true. What else? Why should we obey? So you don't get hurt. So you don't get hurt. That, say more about that, Anna. Why, why would we think our parents wouldn't want us to get hurt? Why, why is that? Because... How do they feel about you? Um, good. Good? That's right. That's right. That's right. Very good. Very good. That's good. You're, you're doing great. What do you think? Why should we obey? Uh, so we can go to heaven. That, that's, that'd be a good thing to have happen, wouldn't it? That's right. Mm -hmm. but, even, but even if we disobey, even if we disobey at times or we, or we don't listen or we don't get it right, that God... We can say, um, we can say that God, God forgive us. Yes, that's right. That's right. And we can do that with our parents too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's important. That's important. So when it comes to why we should obey, what do you think? Why should we obey? Yes, ma'am. What do you think? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's all right. Just stretching over here, is that okay? Is that right? Okay, that's all right, that's all right. Okay, so here we go. Why should we obey? What do you think, Ryan? Well, because we can get consequences what we really don't like and our parents don't like giving us consequences. You wanna just preach the rest of the sermon here? I think you're doing great, Ryan. It's awesome, very good, very good. <laughs> so consequences, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. we're, we're gonna come back to that in just a couple mm -hmm. minutes. That's so important because mm -hmm. our parents, do you think they know something? Do you think they know some things? Are they, are, they, are they probably a little bit smarter than us? Yes. Yeah. And I almost got grounded, but I didn't. Ooh. Well done. Well done. You must not have obeyed right away, huh? My mom said I was grounded, but it was really just not TV for a day. Oh, okay. Okay. That's another way to go. Instead of grounding, no, no mm -hmm. screens. Yeah. Yeah. I've done that myself. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. What do you think? Why should we obey? To please God. To please God. Yeah, that's right. And, and why do you think God is pleased when we obey our parents in, in the Lord like that? What do you think he is? Because we honor his word. That's right. We honor his word. And he's given us his word because he loves us, right? Yeah. Because he wants what's best for us. And, and God, if we talk about him as our father, he wants to make sure that, that we have what we need, that we, we have all that uh, is required of us to, to live lives that, that are close to him, all those things, right? He, he wants to protect us, wants to provide for us. And our parents, they do the same thing? 
Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Very good. Very good. So, okay, guys. So we know why we should obey, right? So, so let me ask you this. Which is better? Obeying out of fear or obeying out of love? What do you think? What do you think, Yana? Obeying our love. Out of being a love. Why do you think so? Because I just think so. That, well, it's a good answer. It's a good answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? What do you think? What do you think, Bo? Obeying out of fear. Obeying out of fear. Why do you say that? Because if you obey and, and, tr- and if you obey me and tell you what, what you're feared of, and then they'll tell you tell you something that you don't mess with, then then I and then I then then you're out of fear. Okay, no, that's good. That's good. So what you're saying is uh, that, that if if we know what those like what Ryan was saying, if we know what those consequences are, something that we don't want to have to experience or don't want to have to deal with, we we're we're afraid of that. Say, I don't want I don't want to have to go through that. I don't want to have those negative consequences in my life. So I'm going to go ahead and and do what what mom is telling me to do or what dad's telling no, me to do. No, no, if you're feared of it's a I said you don't mess with it, and then yeah, and then you always be out of fear. Okay, okay, all right, very good, very good, all right. So when it comes to obeying out of fear or obeying out of love, what do you think? What do you think, Reagan? What do you think over here, man? What do you think? I think it's better to obey out of love, cause just because you obey them, just because you love them. Very good, very good. Mm-hmm. That, uh, you know, when it comes to, there's definitely a time and a place for, for, for knowing that there are consequences. And, 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 and when, I remember when I was little, I, I want to tell you this, my, it's my dad's birthday today. And uh, so happy birthday, dad, if he's watching. But when I was little, I knew, I knew when I was about five or six that if I didn't do what my dad had asked me to do, there were going to be negative consequences. And I knew that that might mean I was going to be grounded. It might mean when I was really little, it might be a spanking. I knew that was going to be a challenge and it was going to be something I had to, I was, I was afraid of. But you know what happened as I got older? I started to realize that my dad, what he was telling me was because he loved me, loved me so much. And I started not being afraid. Instead, I recognized, oh, my dad's telling me to do this or not do this because he loves me, because he wants what's best for me, because he doesn't want me to get hurt. He doesn't want me to, to, to experience something that's going to be for, not for my good. Instead, he wants me to be able to, to, to grow and be healthy and grow in all the ways that a father should want his son to grow. And God wants the same thing for us. He wants the same thing for us all the time. So when it comes to understanding, obeying out of fear, you know, there are a lot of people who start to obey God, afraid of God, but then when they become to better know God, and when we really start to understand how much God loves us, how much God has done and still does for us, how great God is in providing for us in his love and his faithfulness, his forgiveness, all of these things. Then, like we said, obeying God becomes something that we do out of love for God because we know how much God loves us. Does that make sense? So if we're going to obey in love, so then here's something else, and I know we're going to go quickly here. Honor your father and mother, Paul says, for this is the first commandment that comes with a promise. You guys know the Ten Commandments? Have you heard of them before? A few of them? Maybe one or two? Okay. The Fifth Commandment, that's what Paul's talking about right here. It says, honor your father and mother. What does it mean to honor somebody? Do you know? What do you think? What do you think? What's it mean to honor? Do what's right. Do what's right. That's one way we, we can show honor. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think, Ryan? Well, respect others. Very good. Very good. Yeah, show respect. If we honor somebody, we're going to respect them. We're going to show that we value them. We are going to make sure they know how much they mean to us. What do you think, Jack? Obey. Obey? Yeah, and obedience is definitely a way we can honor our parents. Show them that we respect them. Show them that we value them. Show them that we, we trust them. And so when we are called to do that as, as, as children who are following Jesus Christ, Paul says that honor your father and mother. And then here's the second part. And this is so important. He says, this commandment comes with a promise that you may live long in the land. Now this was written to the Israelites first who were going into the promised land. You guys remember that story with Moses and the parting of the Red Sea and all that good stuff? But this is something that the promise still is there for those of us who follow Jesus because, and here's what happens. If you are a child 
and you obey your parents and you're trying to, to, to walk in love and a, and a healthy relationship with your children, what's going to happen? You're going to grow up, right? What are your parents going to do? They might not keep growing up, but they do grow what? Older, right? They grow older. We all do. We all do. And so what happens is when our parents get older, and this, so many in this room right now know exactly what this is all about. When our parents get older, guess what God wants us to be able to do? Say that again. Take care of them. Take care of them. So right now, you might be a child and your parents are protecting you and providing for you and caring for you and you're going to grow up and keep growing by, by God's grace and in God's favor and you're going to get older and you're going to grow up and, and you may have kids of your own and all of this and your parents as they get older and older and older the day's going to come the day very well may come where you're going to recognize that, that now it's your turn it's your turn for your parents to help provide for them, to help protect them, to help care for them, to help make sure that they get to the doctor okay, just like they take you to the doctor now, to make sure they get the right things to eat, just like they make sure you get the right things to eat now, to make sure that they are taking their medicine that they need to take, just like they're taking your, making sure you take your medicine now. You see how this happens? So when God says, honor your father and mother that you may live long in the land I am giving you, what he's saying is you need each other. What he's saying is you need to be provided for now, children, and your parents will need to be provided for then. And if you're healthy and your relationships are healthy, and it doesn't mean they're perfect, it doesn't mean we don't have all kinds of forgiveness and reconciliation and all that stuff to work out along the way, and everybody here knows I'm telling the truth. But what this means is as the people of God, we are meant to care for each other in this way from the youngest generation to the oldest generation so that nobody has to fall through the cracks, so that nobody has to fall along the wayside, so that we are there and we can trust that the ones we cared for when they were little are gonna be the ones who are gonna help care for us when we are older. And we hope that the next generation will do the same for us, right? That's what, what Paul is telling us here. That's what God is saying. And then he says this, he says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. That's what we're talking about here. What does it mean to walk in obedience and honor as the family of God? And what does it mean for us to recognize that, that you know, do you know what discipline is? Does anybody know what that is? Fathers are not supposed to just drive their kids crazy by, by, by just saying things and not giving them guidelines or anything else. What, what do you know? When you hear the word discipline, what do you guys think of? What do you think? Reagan, what do you got? What's discipline mean? Uh, doing what your parents ask. Doing what your parents ask. That, that might be our obedience, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what, if, what if we don't obey? What if we disobey? Uh, they will punish us. They, they, so discipline might have what we call mm -hmm. punishment, right? There might be mm -hmm. some negative consequences that are there, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So discipline can, can involve the, the negative consequences, but it also, also is, I want to show you a picture. You guys know what this is? Can we see that first one there, Brian? You see what that is? Do you guys see how that's a, that's a pathway? You might look at the screen behind you if you can't see the one in front of you. See that pathway along the mountain? What would happen, just curiously, what would happen if that railing wasn't there and you were walking along that, that pathway? What, what might happen? If you weren't looking, you can like drift to the right and fall off. That's right. That first step is a doozy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. So, so when that, that drop-off is there, what do you think, Ryan? What, what else could happen? Well, you could fall down to the trees and sink from more than five million feet to the ocean. That's, wow. <laughs> that's, that's taller than it looks, for sure. Wow. No, that's right. That's right. So when, when, when the Bible says that fathers and, and mothers both are supposed to raise their kids in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord, what the, the image we're supposed to have are like guardrails like this. There's a path that we are to walk. There's a way that God has for us. And yet God has provided these guardrails that keep us from going off the edge of the cliff. And that's something that we're supposed to understand and actually trust that God has for us through our parents. What do you think, Aiden? It might be not a pass, and it might be the wrong pass, so you might like fall. That's right. The yeah, pass. yeah. Th those those guardrails can keep us on the right path, right? Yeah. Very good. That's good. Very good. That's right. So we got to make sure that we have the guardrails that help keep us on the path, on the right way. And then there's another picture. Can we see that one too, Brian? And so because sometimes, look at this one. You guys see what that is? 
That's a highway, right? Do you see that guardrail on the right side? That's sometimes life throws curves at us. Sometimes we don't see that turn coming or maybe we're going too fast and the curve is there. And man, if that guardrail wasn't there and I was going too fast and didn't see that, that curve coming, what would happen? You might crash. I would, I would definitely crash, wouldn't I? Right? If you're yeah. to that, then you'll fall down there. Right? It would be terrible, wouldn't it, Bo? It really would, man. So <laughs> that's right. And so this is why parents, this is what we're called to do. We're supposed to not depend on our own wisdom or all the things that, that, that the pressure sometimes that we feel like we put on ourselves as parents. It's when God says, here is the way, walk in it. The, the discipline and instruction of the Lord that we receive, that is meant to flow through us in the Lord to our children, to our grandchildren. And to not provoke our kids to anger means don't, don't be hard-handed, don't be harsh, be like our, our Father is. We have to have grace, we have to have patience, we have to have understanding, knowing that, that we didn't get it right the first time, and, and neither will our children. We still don't get it right the first time. How we parent in, in, with, with discipline, with intentionality is important, but that should always include grace. Your child should never question if your love for them is questionable, your child should never question, will, will you be here for me when I need you? These are things our, our Heavenly Father shows us how he loves us in this way. Parents, we're meant to love. Grandparents, we're meant to love in that same way. Will we get it perfect as he is perfect? No, we won't. But that's why we need that grace and forgiveness from each other, right? And so very good, guys. This was so good. When it comes to understanding what, what discipline does, what instruction does, it helps us grow in how we love God, how we love each other. And as kids now, we learn to obey the voice of our mom and dad because as we grow up, you know what the most important thing our moms and dads can do? Is help us learn how do we obey the voice of God. And right now, a lot of times that's going to come through what you hear your mom or your dad teaching you, what you hear your mom or dad uh, sharing with you, what you might hear other older people in the church sharing with you. God is, is speaking wisdom, speaking encouragement to you. And the same thing is true. You guys speak truth and encouragement back to us. We all need each other as the family of God. But as you grow and you begin to learn more and more, what does it mean to hear God's voice for yourself? Just like we dedicated Colin and Noel today, we need to understand that their parents are going to raise them to better know and understand and respond to the voice of God. And we can do the same thing as we all grow in our obedience and our honor to, to God together. All right? Can we pray, guys? Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. So good. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful. We're so thankful for your faithfulness, your goodness, how you call us your children in and through our, our being born again through Christ, what it means for us, Lord, to, to come to you needing your grace, needing your patience as you teach us. Sometimes we, we feel we barely can crawl, much less walk in the path and the road that you have given us, Lord, but you have promised you will be faithful. You have promised you will teach us as we surrender ourselves to you. You have promised as we uh, dedicate our children, dedicate our lives to you, as we pray for one another, as we lift up one another, Lord God, you have promised that as our Father, you will lead us. You will discipline us. You will instruct us for our good out of your love. So Father, let us see that with fresh eyes today. Let us receive that with open hearts today that we might love you and walk in your way together in obedience, in honor, all rooted in your grace, all meant to reveal your love to us, in us, and through us. And Lord, let us love one another and love you in return. In Jesus' name we ask it. And everybody said, amen, amen. Okay, guys, as you guys head back to your, to your seats, remember, after we're done with, with the service, you come up and, and, and get me, and I've, I've got something for you, okay? All right, can we thank all of our, our kids for helping us out? You guys are awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. All right.